Tails is another GNU slash Linux distribution, but it's a little bit different than all of the distros that I've reviewed so far because it is a live system only, and it's supposed to be focused on having the ultimate privacy. I think it's based on Debian, like a lot of other good distros are, but it's not really a daily driver OS. This isn't something that you're going to want to go to if, say, you're a Windows or a Mac user that's looking to switch to Linux as a daily driver. Um, so it's pre-configured to run everything through the Tor network. Uh, you run your OS off of a USB, so you're not really meant to install it to a disk. And the reason for that is just like any other live USB, the changes that you make on it don't get saved. So just like how if you were to boot a Linux Mint live USB and you create text files on it, uh, you browse the web and even install new applications to that live environment, as soon as you reboot, everything goes to default. Those text files are removed, web history is removed, new applications are removed. So all of that is going to be really useful if you're trying to avoid being tracked because if any trackers get installed onto your computer, even malware or anything like that, uh, it's going to be gone as soon as you reboot because that USB, that OS is essentially refreshed. Um, can be a little difficult for getting like regular work done uh, if you're using trying to use this as a daily driver. Now you can install persistence on it, uh, we'll get into that later. But some examples of the type of people that would use Tails would be activists. So obviously they don't want to be tracked by governments, law enforcement, uh, corporations, etc. Journalists and their sources, same idea. Domestic violence survivors, um, yeah, I mean, I guess that they could benefit from using Tails as well. They could probably report things uh, over the Tor network and like if their spouse or whoever uh, is monitoring their traffic, well, they would know that they're using Tor unless they use a bridge to connect to Tor, so hopefully they know to do that. Uh, and you, whenever you need extra privacy in this digital world. So you can get Tails from this link here, Get Tails, and there's a few more links that you get depending on whether you're on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Um, they actually... The reason that they have all of this sort of going through different links is because they basically are giving you instructions for how to install Tails, which is very handy. You know, if we go to the Linux one and go to Let's Go, so we have all these instructions about how to verify that uh, your, your Tails download isn't corrupted, you know, making sure that the signatures are verified and everything like that. So this is really good. I mean, Usually when you go to download other distros, even just works distros like Linux Mint, they don't really give you a whole lot of detailed instructions about uh, how to install it. You know, they're just like, here's the ISO. Uh, and I think that they mentioned that you got to flash it to a USB. And maybe they give you a link to like a USB tool. Uh, I don't really know. It's been a while since I've downloaded Linux Mint, but you get the idea. Tails really holds your hand uh, when it comes to installing it. So by default, you get a... A disk image file to install it to a USB. If you want to install it into a virtual machine, uh, then you're going to want an ISO, which is um, elsewhere on here um, for virtual machines. I've already got it downloaded to my system. Now, you don't actually want to install it into a virtual machine like uh, I did because that actually makes a lot of Tails privacy features either completely useless or less effective. So just boot it from USB if you want all of the privacy features. Uh, one of them is spoofing a MAC address of the machine. So that's to make it harder for anybody to track you across many networks. Uh, like take the Xfinity public Wi-Fi, for example, or any public Wi-Fi that's owned by like Starbucks or uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, some other franchise, you got to assume that there might be somebody, uh, especially if it's someone who just personally owns multiple of those franchises, who's able to see all the logs of traffic going all of these. So you can imagine, like, if you're some activist who's, like, on the run, you might be accessing a lot of public Wi-Fi. And if the same MAC address is showing up on all different public Wi-Fis, then you know that that's the same person. So you want to spoof that. Uh, but if you're doing it in a virtual machine, usually by default, the guest OS is going to 
take on the MAC address of the host. So you wanna either configure that setting properly in your VM, uh, or you can spoof the MAC address of your VM as well, uh, but it's better to just use it properly, which is booted from a USB. Now, if you do wanna install it to a VM just to uh, like give it a test drive, um, then you know that's fine. You just wanna set it up as a generic Linux, uh, give it at least two gigs of RAM. I gave mine a little bit more just so that, uh, you know, there wouldn't be any lagginess in the video. Um, and then you don't really need to give it a lot of disk space because you're not really going to be installing anything anyway. Uh, so I just gave it 10 gigs. So we're going to go ahead and start it. This is uh, the page that we see, and we just hit enter on tails. All right, it's going to load up. It's a little bit slower, but uh, maybe that is because it's running GNOME. <laughs> that is the uh, desktop environment it has. Well, actually, this is just the setup screen that it's loading. It's not actually booting the desktop environment yet. Let's see, there we go. So this is like the setup screen that you get. The only real setup that there is to do is to change your language and keyboard layout. Uh, there are additional settings, but we're not gonna really get into that right now because we're gonna use it uh, you know, properly, which is to just start tails. So we'll do that. All right, and now this desktop environment looks like it's taking a little bit of time to load up. Um, let me see, maybe I can try doing this. Okay, yeah, that's all it was. Just gotta go back to full screen. Um, so now when you first start Tails, you don't want to run onto the network right away. Uh, we just saw the notification there that Tor started up, but you don't want to do it right away uh, because Tails connects to the Tor network, and we want to have all of our traffic go over that so that nobody on the internet can get our IP address and figure out where we are. Uh, so you'll see this in your notifications uh, once Tor is ready. So uh, this is our desktop environment. Of course, it's GNOME. Uh, I'm not really a fan of it. I know a lot of pe other people are. Let's take a look at the applications. So we've got in our accessories, calculator, file manager, uh, just the regular GNOME file manager. Um, GTK hash, we've got a password manager, KeyPass XC, which is pa a password manager that I recommend, so that's very good. Uh, text editor, this is probably gedit. Yeah, it looks like gedit. Uh, for graphics, we've got uh, GIMP, We've got Inkscape, LibreOffice Draw, so we do have the whole LibreOffice suite on here. For internet, this is probably where you're gonna be spending most of your time if you're using uh, Tails realistically. Um, so Electrum, Bitcoin Wallet, uh, that's going to be for, obviously it's a Bitcoin wallet for managing your wallets and things like that, uh, transferring, receiving, etc. Uh, we've got Onion Circuits, Onion Share, we've got Pigeon, Internet Messenger, Thunderbird, the Tor Browser, uh, the Unsafe Browser, which is currently disabled. Uh, we'll take a look at that later when I change um, the settings. I think it's disabled. It looks like it's starting to, trying to start up there. Um, so we go to Office, got the whole LibreOffice suite, Calc, Draw, Impress. And programming, we've got Poedit, which is like a translation tool. I didn't know what this was when I first uh, opened it. I don't know why it's under programming. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe translating different languages is technically considered programming. You'd think that there would be uh, like some sort of an IDE in here, right? Like maybe Genie. I don't know. Uh, sound and video, we've got Audacity. Uh, Bressaro, this is another application that I wasn't hadn't seen before. Uh, sound juicer, and then another sound recorder. I don't really know why they have this and Audacity together. That seems a little weird. Uh, and then a video playing tool. System tools, uh, so we've got Synaptic Package Manager, which we also can't really use right now because uh, there's no root account. Uh, root terminal, can't use that either. Um, 
your system settings, and then this is where you would configure a persistent volume, but it's not gonna let me do that because I'm not actually booted from USB. If you were though, then you could do that to create your persistent volume. And we'll look at the last few applications. So we've got Dasher under Universal Access and then under Utilities, Archive Manager, Password and Keys, System Monitor, some other things. Um, so yeah, there's not really a lot of different applications on here and that's to try and prevent application sprawl and really just keep the ISO uh, as small as possible and easier to maintain because the maintainers of Tails, uh, since they want to keep it super secure, they have to make sure that any software that's going to be on here is also super secure, that it's up to date and there's no... Um, like privacy flaws in it, anything that's going to reveal your IP address, your location, or be a vector for malware to be installed. And like I said, most of your time on Tails is going to be spent uh, right within this tab and really right on Tor. So why don't we just go ahead and start that up, get to the whole uh, point of using Tails. All right, so we've got our Tor browser starting up now. And we've got a unique page that we go to uh, when we start up, which is this Tails site. So this is where you're going to see any updates about Tails. Uh, we've got the latest one. I just uh, downloaded it today, so I'm on the latest version. And then this is pretty much a standard Tor browser, but there's a couple of differences. So one is we've got uBlock Origin installed. Um, not really sure why we're doing that because, you know, you can disable JavaScript, which pretty much is going to disable all ads uh, anywhere. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird because this can actually mess up your OPSEC a little bit. If uh, you go to a website, they can usually fingerprint what kind of add-ons you have installed. And they can tell if you're using Tor anyway. I mean, that's pretty easy to figure out um, because all of the IPs that are used by exit nodes are public and pretty much all the Tor nodes, their IPs are public. So people are gonna know that you're on Tor and that you've got uBlock Origin. And if you put those two things together and you know that this is how Tails is configured by default, you can say, hey, this person's obviously using Tails. Um, so that seems a little weird. Another thing that seems a little weird is the security level. So the security level is set to standard and by default, it's gonna be on safer. So it seems a little weird that they don't have it at least set to safer or even safest. Like um, on my Tor browser and you know on Tor in general, once you configure this setting, it's going to be persistent every time you start it up. Uh, and lots of sites and hidden services on Tor do work with the safest setting. So I don't know, That's that also seems a little weird. Um, maybe the reason that they do this is they want people to browse like the clear net more often with Tor. Uh, that might be the idea that it's not so much geared towards accessing hidden services because a lot of hidden services you can't even access unless you have your security level set to safest and you're blocking JavaScript and everything like that. Um, and then with an ad blocker, I don't know off the top of my head if they block you if you have extra add-ons installed, uh, but that seems like another thing that some hidden services might do. Now let's take a look at our terminal and see some of the terminal based applications. And let me see if I can change this because this looks really ugly. Um, let's see, I think it's in preferences. Okay. Um, all right, there we go. That's good enough. So, um, a lot of things are disabled on the Tails OS. Like uh, if we were to, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so for example, if we were to do something as simple as ping, okay, you see that we get this operation not permitted. <laughs> so you're not allowed to ping things. Um, what else is disabled? Okay, you can't do this. You can't try to get your IP from the terminal by curling ip.me, that's also uh, blocked by the firewall. Um, 
let me see what other what other things are there oh trace route so you can't do this either <laughs> it's not permitted so all of this stuff is disabled with firewall rules to try and make you more secure uh, I guess prevent someone from being able to see your IP address, like maybe you're doing a screen share with someone and they try to trick you into running a command like curl uh, ip.me, because if you run this on your machine, it's going to give you your public IP address. Uh, so maybe they're trying to trick you to do that, um, or they could try to get you to ping an IP address that they own, and then on that server, they can see that this IP address is pinging them. Uh, so they don't want you doing that because it could potentially reveal your real IP. So Tails disables all that with firewall rules. Uh, now, one thing that might not seem obvious uh, with Tails, oh, meant to do that, uh, might not seem obvious is that if you're not familiar with live systems is that you can't really update Tails. Uh, so you could update in a live session, but as soon as you restart, things are going to be back to how they are. Uh, now you can use Tails with persistence, like I mentioned earlier, which is going to create a persistent volume on your USB drive where you can save things. And if you do that, then you can update and of course save things. Um, you can only create a persistent storage on a USB drive as well. So I can't demo that for you in a VM. But persistent storage is automatically encrypted, so it's gonna be fairly secure. Just make sure you use a good password for the encryption. Uh, but without persistence, the only way to actually update Tails and have it work every time you reboot is to just reflash a newer version of Tails, um, you know, download it online and then reflash it and basically recreate the live USB. Uh, so that's one reason to maybe consider using persistence, especially if you're gonna be using Tails a lot. So now with most of the basic stuff out of the way, let's see about changing some of those default settings that we had in the beginning. Because uh, some of this stuff you're probably going to want to change if you're going to really use it as a daily driver. All right, so we'll start this. All right, so down here where we have this little plus, uh, these are the extra settings. So administrator password, you wanna go ahead and turn that on and create admin password so we can actually do admin stuff. Um, you can also change MAC address spoofing if you want, um, network connection and unsafe browser. Let's enable that as well, just so that we can <laughs> take a look at the unsafe browser. All right, and let's go ahead and start tails. All right, so we're back in Tails, and uh, it's syncing my clock right now, and there we go, we've got Tor started up. So first, let's take a look at installing some new software on here. So we'll go to Synaptic Package Manager, and we'll authenticate with our root password. Because there's not really that much that's on here by default, as you saw. Uh, there's not even, let's see, I don't think we have a, I need to change this because this is just, <laughs> it's blinding. I don't know why they don't default to a dark theme terminal. There we go. All right, so um, there's no NeoFetch. Uh, I think there's top. Yeah, there is top so we can see roughly how much is being used. 720 is not too bad, especially considering it's GNOME. Well, it is a stripped down version of GNOME. It's not like a, it's not, it doesn't come with all the bloat that GNOME has. I'm um, curious to see if that theme is persistent. Okay, that's good. Um, let's see, we can use the system monitor that's built in. So this is how you're supposed to track what's going on. 
Yeah, they keep it simple and they don't have too many things started up just to, again, it's, it's easier to secure a system when it's very simple. You know, if you have a lot of applications that are on here that you're losing track of, that's application sprawl, things start getting outdated and, uh, you know, vulnerabilities pop up. Okay, we still have a while to sync that. Oh, let's take a look at the unsafe browser in the meantime. Let's see how unsafe we can get. Launch the unsafe browser is not anonymous and they will see your real IP address. Yep, let's do it. So I guess it's taking down whatever, uh, Okay, and then they give you a giant warning. <laughs> they really don't want us using this browser. <laughs> but they still have the um they still have the uh the canvas spoofing though to make it look like we have a smaller monitor. That's interesting. So is this like I wonder what browser this is. What is going on here? Okay. So help about unsafe browser. Okay, so I guess it's just literally the Tor browser, but not connecting to the Tor network. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I wonder, is this just like a profile thing? Is there like a safe profile and a unsafe profile? No, it doesn't look like it. I just see the one. Okay, well, this is the unsafe browser. So we can go to like YouTube and stuff like that and it's all normal and it's not gonna be um, you know, translated to another language because we're not accessing it from another country. We're not accessing it from the Tor network. I like this splash page though. This is like the, the, most, the most concerning warning that I've ever seen. I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's the unsafe browser, but there's a few hoops you have to jump through to even get to this in the first place. You know, you got to change the setting, shutting down the unsafe browser. Okay, this has a few more seconds to go. Um, let's see, was there anything else? Well, I guess there's the root terminal. Let me start that up. Yeah, and then again, we have this, this ugly, ugly, this ugly theme. So we can look at all of our uh, places that we're normally not supposed to see. Uh-oh, looks like we have an error here. Could not download all repository indexes. Okay. Maybe we won't be able to install new software. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Okay, actually, yeah, we can see a lot of software here. So here we go. Um, why don't we do, like... NeoFetch. Just curious what Tails' looks like. Mark for installation. And we will apply. Oh, actually, why don't we do, uh, why don't we do a couple? Do our HTOP as well. I like HTOP. <laughs> I like the colors. I know that top is all you need, but I like the colors. All right, apply. Let it do its thing. I wonder if it's downloading them over the Torn network too. Maybe, because it, it seems like it took a while for it to sync. So that it might have been doing that as well. I guess the unsafe browser is the only thing that we've had not go over the Torn network so far. Well, other than the pings but they just disable that with firewall rules so that we can't ping anybody. No pinging allowed if you're on tails. All right, so we got our changes applied. Go ahead and close out of this. And let's see how that looks. Got our H top. Yeah, just over a gig being used. Eh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad for GNOME. 
And let's see what our NeoFetch looks like. Oh, okay, so it actually gives us a Debian one. I guess that makes sense. It is based on Debian after all. Uh, so what do I think about the Tails OS? I think it's pretty good. You know, if all things considered for what it's meant for, giving you privacy and anonymity and uh, making it simple so that you don't really have to think about anything, I think it nails that. It just disables anything that would screw up your OPSEC. It just, it doesn't really let you. Uh, well, other than I guess giving somebody your name and address uh, on the internet, on tour, you know, that'll still mess it up. Uh, but it, it basically does everything that you could do on a technical level uh, to prevent somebody from revealing their identity. There's a few things I don't like about it though. So there's obviously GNOME. I mean, I get it. That's more of just a, uh, you know, stylistic preference. Um, there's no Monero wallet though. And that seems a little bit weird. Like we've got, you know, we've got the, um, uh, where was it at? Internet. So we've got the Electrum Bitcoin wallet, but of course, Bitcoin isn't very anonymous. You know, there's, there's nothing about Bitcoin that is inherently anonymous. Monero uh, would be a much better cryptocurrency to use if you're trying to remain anonymous. And a lot of the um, hidden services and online marketplaces on Tor and things like that, they accept Monero. So that seems a little weird that they wouldn't accept it or they, they wouldn't have a like Monero, even a Monero CLI, right? They could have the command line application built in. It's not very big. Um, don't know why they don't include it. And with the Tor browser, I think it's a little bit weird that the default settings are, um, you know, as unsafe or standard, you know, as low as they could be. And with this uBlock origin thing, that's gonna make it easier for somebody to identify that you're actually using Tails. Uh, so I don't exactly know what the purpose of that is, but if it really bothers you, you can obviously uninstall it and you can obviously uh, change the security level from standard to something safer. So that's it for my review of Tails OS. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.